Back in the day, and again, we're talking about a function of economics, back in the day when athletes and, and the media were closer, athletes and reporters were making approximately the same thing. Um, I can remember in the 70s, after Cowboy games, Leroy Jordan, the middle linebacker, would invite us all to go to his post-game parties at Carlos and Pepe's, and we'd go have a couple of beers and talk with the guys about how the game went. That would never happen today because the players are making millions and millions of dollars, and they get in their Aston Martins after the game, and they leave. Um, uh, but also, back in the 60s, uh, this was a job that the players only had six months a year. O other than that, they actually went out and got jobs the other six months of the year. They sold insurance, or they drove trucks or whatever because they weren't making enough to live on. And so uh, there was a kind of a natural uh, friendship between reporters and, and athletes because they kind of were working in the same almost blue collar world. My main mentor in broadcasting was Vern Lundquist, who is now the number one college football announcer for CBS, one of the great sportscasters in the history of the business. And he taught me, he was a great teacher. He was, he was the most patient teacher in the world and he never, Everything that he asked you to do, he already knew how to do himself. He wasn't telling you how to do some far off thing that he didn't understand. He could do it all himself. And uh, he, he put up with my young attitude and my you know, smart ass questions and things. Basically what he told me was, uh, always call all these people by their first name because they're just athletes and owners. They're not gods. Don't treat them that way. Treat them as people and they'll respect you and they'll treat you that way too. And that came through, I think, in what I did. I never ever looked at any of them like they were uh, like they were heroes who had to be idolized, even though, you know, a couple of them I was very big fans of. But uh, he just taught me that uh, this was a job and your job was to get the story and get it right and make certain that you conveyed to the fans the fact that you were just dealing with people who had certain talents. Uh, other mentors that I had mostly were people that I watched, people that I observed. They're not really people that I worked for. And uh, you just, you know, you kind of watch and you find out how to, uh, how to behave, and you see guys like Blackie Sherrod from the Times Herald used to always stand way on the outside of the group of people interviewing anybody, and he'd just watch, he'd listen, he'd watch, and he'd listen, and then at the end he'd ask the one question no one else had asked yet. He'd waited for everybody else to finish, and then he got the one question no one else had asked, everybody else had left, and he got the quote all for himself. So, you know, there were little tricks everybody had that you picked up that way.